Hey guys, Marco here in the shop. Uh, today I got a, what are they called? It's a probe ring gauge uh, standard, basically. Uh, that's the dimension in inches, 2.00002. And the dimension itself is not important. The important thing is that that number is correct. So we'll take that as a given. The other thing we take as a given is that the steps per inch that I calibrated the motors to run are pretty good. I think you might have seen my video um, that I put out at the very beginning. I have about less than half a ten, I'm sorry, less than half a thousand of an inch, let's just talk inches today, in the X direction, in this Y direction, as well as in the X direction and in the Z direction. So we'll take those for granted. Those make a lot of big difference in what we're discussing today. And then uh, with that, I decided to do a couple of tests. First, to measure, measure this all uh, repeatedly uh, until I can get a, a good size for the effective probe tip diameter. I was a tip diameter is two millimeters, but because of the over travel and everything is actually a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, less. Um, than that. So I had started out with uh, a probe diameter of uh, 1.873 on this machine. Turned out didn't change a whole lot. I got to 1.8849, but let me show you uh, how I ran this test. So obviously up here, I use that center function right there, the one with the little hand. And I'll just run that test just to show you how that works. So to run that, first of all, you have to put that tip of the stylus uh, somewhat in the center. And uh, actually, elevate this a little bit. Somewhat in the center and uh, above the part, uh, a little bit less than the amount of the search depth right here. So I put mine about three millimeters above the surface and I told him to search to a depth of six millimeters. That's how far down into the ring it'll go. The other things you wanna have, you wanna have, uh, let's see, the search uh, distance. For the first search distance, you could have the actually a cold diameter, but uh, if you put a little bit more than half of the diameter, that will work unless you're completely off the center there, but you, if you eyeball it good enough, that should work. And the other important thing, you wanna put the XY clearance zero, edge length zero, so the probe goes straight down and then to all different sides to test it. So we're gonna run it now, show you how that works. Have you plugged in the probe? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna click OK. And the probe should go down and uh, let you watch this. process. Now I changed my search speed up to 300. I did it at 200 but I changed it to 300. It didn't seem to have any appreciable uh, changes in the diameter it measured and it runs a little quicker this way. Now obviously the probe will center itself. I'm trying to hold this camera steady and then in the X, Y, I'm sorry, Y directions. And that should give us the dimensions for the hole in millimeters. Now, 2.00002 inches in millimeter is uh, 50 millimeters, point eight zero zero five zero eight. You get to the point that the decimal uh, starts losing meaning, really, uh, given the assumption we have made. Alright, so now down here you can see it's measuring 50.7982 whatever. Let me just show you I ran this test quite a few times here. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. And uh, this is the probe the probe size, the original probe size, and I cha kept changing the size of the probe until I was able to shrink the delta, uh, the difference between the actual diameter and the measured diameter. I got to the point with 18849, 
the, my delta is, uh, oh boy, it's less than half of a 10,000. Again, as, once you get that close, the, the numbers start, start losing meaning um, because of the assumption we have made. But then after that, I decided to do a test on uh, repeatability. So how repeatable is this probe and how repeatable is this machine? So I just did this test like five times. I'll show you, show you what I did here. And so I reran the same program as you just saw, except, and of course when you run any of these probing, you need to be not in machine coordinate. But then I would check the machine coordinate and write them down and make sure that every time the probe would go back to the center of the uh, gauge there and record the coordinate and see what the difference is. So here's the test that I just ran, ran this thing five times. So here's the X and the Y, I recorded them. Here's the differences. And uh, here's the average distance uh, uh, difference of the X y coordinate for the zero point and uh, basically on the uh, the delta x is uh one two three so less than well about half of a ten thousand off the average and the average in the y direction is uh one point six ten thousands uh off uh throughout the various measurements so all in all probe is doing all right as long as you make sure that you dial it in every time you use it. And the machine is absolutely incredible. This is, uh, the repeatability here is just uh, astonishing. Much better than my old, old X2 over there that is gathering dust as we speak. So hope that helps uh, in case you're on the fence whether this is a good machine to buy or not. Uh, it needs some work, but uh, it's getting there.